Hi everyone, it is the most fabulous day here in Derbyshire and today I'm going to be showing you how to decorate this fabulous willow tree. Hi, I'm Melanie from Balloon Artworks here in Derbyshire in the UK. There are a few things you want to consider if you're going to be decorating a tree and that is before you start you just want to check over the bark. Now this tree around this area is pretty smooth. I'm quite sure that as we get higher up we'll find some prickly bits and some knobbly bits but you just want to get a bit of a feel for the type of tree it is, the type of bark it is. Is it is it smooth? This is a very well established tree so it's had chance to uh, weather and the bark to smooth down over the years so I think we're going to be okay with this one but when you're working in the outdoors and when you're working with trees you know popping is a real possibility <laughs> right you know it's highly likely that you're going to get some poppage so there are a few things that we can do to our balloons to just help with that and trying to uh, reduce the risk of popping so i'll be going through those very shortly the other thing you need to consider is the height of the tree. So this is a very established tree. It's got the most beautiful canopy. It's incredibly tall and it's your classic willow shape. When you think of a weeping willow, this is a classic weeping willow shape. And we don't want to take away from the beauty of that tree. <laughs> I don't know whether you can hear the donkeys <laughs> braying in the background. For my outdoor organic installations, I use this polyester braided line. You can get it on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can get it. And it comes in different grades. So I tend to use one mil for indoors and two mil for outdoors. And what I like about it particularly is it doesn't stretch. Unlike things like curling ribbon and monofilament, which I tend not to use outdoors anyway, but these things stretch and they're not very strong. So this is very strong and it doesn't fray easily at all. So it's strong, it doesn't fray. If you've any kind of friction, so if you've set up your display and it turns windy, this is strong and it's going to take an awful lot for this to fray. I'm using my braided line and I'm keeping it on the spool and I'm just <laughs> wrapping it around the tree. Okay. And then I'm going to tie. I'm going to leave quite a long tail and wrap round once, pull it. I tend to put my finger there and then I make a permanent knot by bringing the end through that loop once and through a second time. And then you can pull that knot tight and that's a permanent knot, it's not going to come undone. Notice I haven't tied this very tightly to the tree. I can get several fingers underneath. We have to respect the tree, it's a living thing and I don't want to tie the line too tightly. It's not going to be on for very long, we'll remove it at the end of the, um, the event. I'm taking the length of line that's attached to the spool and I'm just going to wrap in my first cluster. So I'm using duplets and making them into clusters of four. And you'll notice that these balloons are very underinflated. So it's a very hot day. We've got a slightly rough surface and there could be some prickly things around the place. So we want these balloons to be very soft, very durable. And latex balloons can withstand quite a lot, but we need to give them a fighting chance. So continue adding clusters. I've seen quite a few videos where people are recommending that you connect the clusters together very tightly. Sometimes I create my garland or what I call the skeleton of the garland in my studio and then I take it to the event. In other instances I build on site as I am doing now from scratch. It, it just depends really on what I'm creating but I think it is very hard to know for sure what the contours of your structure are going to be and how much flexibility you need within that garland. So if you have 
tied everything together really tightly and everything is packed together very tightly then it's got very going to be very difficult for you to follow the contours of your structure in a, any kind of natural way so i like to have that flexibility uh, mine is an approach that takes longer but i like the results so i think it just depends on what you prefer to do and what it is you're making so if you're working with more unusual structures rather than creating a garland against a flat wall then i definitely think that having some fluidity on the line as you you know add balloons to the monofil monofilament or the the um polyester braided line as we're using today as you're doing that and you're allowing a little bit of movement within that skeleton garland then it's going to give you more flexibility and you can always fill in the gaps later as we're going to today. The next stage involves a heavyish sand weight. This is possibly slightly too heavy, so maybe a little bit smaller than this. It needs to have a reasonable amount of weight to it, and you need to attach it to the end of your line. So right at the end. So I create a loop, and then I put it over the neck of the sand weight, the inner balloon. And if you don't know how to make sand weights, I do have a video that shows you how to make these, okay? And then I tie a knot just to secure that, okay? So there you go. I'm going to take this weight and throw it over this bow here, and that will hoist the garland up without needing to use the step ladders. So we're probably going to use the step ladders later in this video, but if we can minimize the use of ladders, it's always a good thing. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy this one next.